Okay, all right, that's good, that'll work. Okay, so this guy came to visit and he just changed his YouTube channel and he's trying to find a good name. So what is it? It used to be, Ma used to be Magnavox Man, now it's Thermionic Man. Yeah, well, I like the uh, the vintage tube stuff. And, yeah. Uh, I'm, it's kind of a specialty of mine, consoles and radios and mm -hmm. amplifiers. And for a while, you know, these Magnavoxes were the best ones and what I really liked and what I was able to find. But my interests spread out more, and I'm thinking maybe a more generic name or term like thermionic man yeah. you know and uh that's a handle i've been using on ebay for a number of years people trust me when i sell like expensive tubes mm -hmm. and expensive things so i'm thinking maybe thermionic man is more appropriate because i'm not just in the magnavox yeah yeah so why am i letting you come here uh, what are we uh huh, huh? well let's open right. it up let's so, open it up i want to see it i want to see it all right well <laughs> Ren's been wanting a lathe for a long time. So Ren, in here. A new lathe, well, old lathe, but a good good old lathe, 100 year old. So let's take a look. Oh, and you got a couple of these egg crates that came with it. Nice. And that's a very hard to find part. We'll talk about that later. That, okay. That'll make a follow rest. There's the, the adapter to have a, the belt drive to electric. Yep. Right? So originally this uh, counter shaft or counter pulley uh, would have been like mounted and driven by oh who knows like a, a steam engine or maybe mm -hmm. maybe a water wheel or something. That's why that's why it's called an engine lathe because of the overhead pulley from an engine like a, a workshop engine. Yep, I would have imagined there'd have been a dozen of these machines in a room and mm -hmm. uh, and they all would have been hooked to a central shaft. Well, back in the early 80s and I think we found a date on here somewhere around 81, 82. Somebody. Uh, took this lathe and made a mount, you know, to mount an electric motor, and it's heavy as heck. And it's actually a fairly good size motor, but it's only yeah. rated a quarter horsepower. Now I think the, probably good heat dissipation mostly. Yeah, but I mean, we saw it run; it ran beautifully and it ran quiet. Um, so here's the lathe bed, and it's about, it's about four feet long or so. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it's very heavy. Uh, I mean, I lifted it with the man that we got it from, and it was it was a chore for the two of us. Actually, speaking of that, you sent me footage of that, so I should just show that now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so here is the footage of you getting the lathe for me. All right. Leaving work now to pick up Ren's new lathe, the uh, Milwaukee to Lake Bluff, 59 minutes. Hopefully traffic will be good. When I get there, Glenn will have it ready, and we'll, we'll load it up. Uh, a lot of fun. You'd think you're out in the country, but it's right between Chicago and Milwaukee. In the right gear and stuff. Yeah, we can give this thing a whirl. Just want, you just want to make sure it's not going to jam or something, right? Right. All sorts of knobs that don't really tell you what's going to happen, right? You know, it's very old school kind of technology. But yeah, you know, it all works. We can uh, turn on the power feed or something too real quick. All right, cool. Uh, Okay, let's see. So you've used this in your making custom guitars and such? Yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. I can definitely go uh, show you some right, right after this. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so that's for a pretty cool thread. You know, uh... Very cool. Okay. Okay, so we're getting ready to take the lay of the part here yeah. for shipment. We just put uh, the different tooling, the wrenches and what have you in plastic bags. And, uh, Glenn, what part are you going to take apart first? This is the motor mount. Okay. Okay. Getting ready to lift up the lathe. And maybe put it the other way. Uh, yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. We're getting ready to take the legs off. And, uh, it looks like there's three square bolts on each side. We've got the, uh, just the bed and the legs remaining for disassembly. All right, mission accomplished. Lathe is in the back of the truck. Just have to drive careful, not have any problems. I don't have it all strapped down. It's just set back there, but it's so heavy that uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. 
And then, um, I just want to say thank you very much for getting the lights for me. That uh, means a lot. I'll get the money for you when we get done. That's fine. <laughs> oh, you just want to give it to me? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'll get you the money. 450 bucks for this is not bad. That's a no. good. Oh, uh, the prices up in near Chicago are like so much better than down here. Because down here, this would be at 2,000 bucks. Yeah, up up in uh, the Chicago and Milwaukee area, there's a, there was of course so many machine shops and things. So I think yeah. it's more a matter of there's just more availability. Mm -hmm. For instance, we were talking about anvils and lathes. Now down here in Southern Illinois, Central Illinois, you could find anvils over at the you know the metal shop or whatever yeah. for not too awful bad price, but. They go for five, six, seven, eight hundred, some a thousand dollars up in Milwaukee. It's crazy. There's a guy, uh, I think he has a warehouse like in Carlinville or something like that, like a couple miles from here, man, like 40 miles. And I think he has like, like 150 anvils and he like actually deals with blacksmithing supplies. And it's just like, that would probably go for a lot more up where you are. Yeah. It <laughs> or would. actually, you know what? Maybe because that guy exists with 150 anvils in that, that like warehouse of stuff, maybe that's why the prices are lower here. That could be. That, that could, could actually, be. like one store with that much hardware could probably actually lower the value of stuff around here. Oh yeah. An interesting thing about this lathe, it's got the original cast iron legs and people buy these legs. You don't often find the lathes with the legs anymore because people are selling them to like like hipsters and, and urban folk who want to create cool coffee tables or oh, some really? kind of steampunk look. So the legs are probably worth more than the lathe or they're worth mm -hmm. just as much. So that, that was a nice thing, you know, that, that they were in there. Now I kind of got it covered up a little bit with these chairs and this blanket, but let's pull that stuff out. Let's so you get can... it out. Get it out. Oh, you did bring bricks. Holy shit. Well, Whoa, that's, there's the papers. One... I've got some different pavers and uh, and I thought they might be unique to the, you know, they're so heavy, I don't think they shipped them all over America. We should do a brickology video and revive that series there over, you go. over the weekend because uh, Magnavox man, Thermionic man is going to be coming back because they're doing like a road trip and they're just coming and visiting. So tomorrow we'll, we'll make sure to do a brickology video. All right, so we've got the bricks, we've got, the, uh, oh, this leg here um, has the back uh, upper motor mount. Okay. You know, that, that was custom made, and it actually seems like it's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I think it'll be even better with the half horse motor I brought you. Okay. So that'll be awesome. Is that uh, single phase also? No, it's three phase, but I also brought you a VFD oh. so you could play. Ooh, a VFD. Uh. <laughs> Fucking hell. I had an old one that I didn't need and uh, I thought you might, I'd like to see somebody actually use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that's so cool. You, so let, let, let's wait for the train. Okay, so this, this drill press, I found it in Chicago and it was actually manufactured and used for the war effort in World War II. And the way that you can identify it. With a war finish? Well, you would think, right? But get a load of this, a detail as small as the ID tag. They, they used aluminum before the war and they used mm -hmm. aluminum after the war, but during the war, they made it out of an embossed fiber material. Oh. And so it's not metal. They saved out aluminum for airplanes. And it's just a little tag, size of a dog tag. But they're usually missing because they're fiber and they didn't hold up. Yeah. It's on this one, you can read all the serial numbers. Nice. So it's very cool. And, that is um, really cool. You sure you don't want anything for it? Or how, no, how much you want for it? Or? No. Okay. I, I've got the, I wanted a big one. And my Liz said I can't have as many drill presses as I mm. want. So, so you get, you get this one. You know what? To be honest, like you're kind of at the point with this kind of stuff that I am with wood. Like I'm just kind of throwing wood at you. Like, like you want this nitro nine lumber here? Take some, <laughs> take one, take more. So exactly. I can I, I can kind of understand it. Yep. Okay, so this is more stuff that you brought. Well, I did. And Ren, I couldn't help but notice that you liked laser discs. I think about a year or so ago, maybe even a little longer than a year in a winter, like 15 months ago or something, you had a video where you were slinging laser discs out in the snow. Yeah. All right. And then I thought to myself, God, I wonder if, if Ren likes laser discs or just happened to find one. So I asked you. Yeah. And you said, Yeah, I. I Freaking love laser discs. I fucking love ah. laser discs. Not freaking. <laughs> this, gal, this gal loves her some fucking laser discs. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I had a laser disc collection since I was 18 years old, mm -hmm. and I got out of it for a while, and then I got back into it in the 90s, and so I had all these movies, and we haven't watched them for 15 years. And to be honest, I, I probably wasn't going to set them up again, and so it's just a really great thing uh, that I could just pass them along to you. So many good movies. There is. There's, there's like 150, 175. <gasps> oh, 12, 13. Oh, yeah. Nice. And uh, you'll find some laser discs in here are like from the first 
releases back in like the late 70s. No doubt there's going to be some disc rot. Cause there I, is. I, I want to do a video of disc rot, and so I need a lot of examples of it. So that well, should be helpful. It will be. Like, for instance, I'll be very surprised if this works. This was an early disc, uh, probably from around 78, and uh, it was an MCA Disco Vision. When you throw mm -hmm. these in, it says Disco yeah, Vision. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know. They only did that till 79, I think. Right. Now, I can honestly tell you, as someone who was there, I was, I was young, but I think I made $100 a week, and laser discs cost $30 each. And I'd go out and buy one or two of my check and scrape by on the last 30 bucks. They're expensive. Oh, here's a quiz. What was the first movie where the prices of VHS tapes, they decided instead of going 100 bucks a piece, they went, they went cheap just to sell them directly to consumers instead of renting them? The first one. The movie that really broke it, like they, they decided, you know what, we're going to sell them for really cheap and just sell a bunch of them instead of just selling right. them rental places. For some reason, I feel like saying E.T., but I'm probably wrong. Um, it's 1983 or 4. I can't remember what the year is now. Okay. Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. That was the first movie where they, where they decided instead of selling it for 120 bucks a yes. tape or whatever, they're going to sell it for 20 bucks a tape and sell it through the rental shops. And it, it just took off. And that's when it all started. Yep. Well, oh, so you said there was something about the laser disc players. Yeah. Was there anything uh, in particular that... Well, let's take a look here. You got a, a CLD-2080, a CLD-2070, and a CLD-3030. Okay. Yes. Someone is not happy because there's someone new here. This is our... Um, you recognize... Oh, kitty. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> She's That's not happy. Nice. Okay, so these are kind of the laser disc players I settled on about 20 years ago. Oh, and by um, the way, these are little stocking stepper things for yes. the shop, so thank you very much. You're welcome. The, uh, the bottom one is a CLD 3030, and that's an interesting player. It's like late 80s. Here, get it out. But uh, this particular one, if I recall, it, it had a certain amount of, you know, storage memory in it, and it can take like a, 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 a CLV disc and freeze the frame. Oh, nice. It was one of the first ones that could do that. Before that, it was only the CAV, I believe, that could do it. So this one has all like all the features, but it only plays one side. It's a really high quality unit, and it's got a ridiculous remote control. It's about the size of a pie plate. The <laughs> yes, that's the one <laughs> with the jog switch and everything else. I do like that. Yep. And um, so then there's a there's a 2070 and a 20 or. 2080 yeah. yeah and both of those um are like like early 90s 92 93 94 players and they were like almost top of the line they played both sides of the disc without flipping them really yes holy shit yes mine doesn't do that yeah they play both sides without flipping no them no more flipping discs and they had like high quality comb filters in them so you'd get a little better picture and uh and they had remote control and so this one has two video outs What's that? What's that about? It's for people that, you know, I don't know. They you have, don't have enough screens? Yeah, exactly. You want to have one for each eye? Okay. Well, back then, that would have been something, you know, that was really expensive to buy. I'm sure those players costed, well, I know they costed like more than $1,000 back then. Manufactured January 1991. Manufactured January 1989. Manufactured July 1988. There you go. There you go. Oh, uh, what's this stuff? Oh, um, okay. So here's a remote control, and I think this is a, this is a Pioneer LaserDisc remote. Okay. And this one actually was Ooh. with the 2080, but I think it'll control the 2070 or the 2080. So we took really good care of this one, and it still had the original manual and everything. Okay. Okay. And then a, a pretty neat RCA service guide for the roundies and stuff, you know. Um, uh, that, that TV that I have is probably outside of the... 1969, so it's probably out of that. Very close, though. Okay. When I get one of these TVs, I'm gonna find one eventually. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> There's right. no doubt of that. My neighbor's gonna be starting up his uh, blacksmithing in a bit. Okay. Well, are these for? Um... Well, those are for lawnmowers okay. or whatever you want. Now, those are 10-inch tires, and I found them. They're one eighth of an inch wider than the ones that you needed. Yeah. But I still think they would work. Yeah. And I figured, if nothing else, you could save them for the next one. Oh, definitely. I keep buying more and more of those models. Well, exactly. Oh, right, the TV. Oh. Now that is, you sure you want to get rid of that plasma? Like, that's nice. Well, 
Yes, because uh, in my house, I've got to always have the latest things, so I got 4K OLED and all that. You rich motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that that was like the last generation plasma. It's a Panasonic screen. It was a TV marketed by Best Buy, so it's 51 inches uh, to corner to corner, and it's it's 1080p. You know, it's got like a 600 hertz refresh rate, and it's just a beautiful TV. That's pretty cool. And um, so. But I thought you would enjoy it because it's awesome for the laser disc. It still has a composite video input, and you just don't see that anymore. And I, I'm sure you could get some kind of adapter, but you know you have to pay money, and would it be as good? Would it look? Would they look okay on that? Because I know like some things when, when you upscale into a TV, they look, they look like shit. No, they look good on there. Oh, really? And yes, and the later laser discs in the collection were were really well mastered. That you could you can see the evolution of laser discs from being crappy. Mm -hmm. You know, to be, eh, I mean, I mean, uh, what do they call it? Cropped, you know, and it was just awful. And they, they looked like mud. They looked like they actually mastered the laser disc from VHS tapes. That's actually probably a good thing because I just turned on this TV again, and uh, this rear projection TV is having some like vertical, like jittering issues, and it's like, uh, we'll have to figure that out. So this might be a good bet for the laser disc. Well. Plus now I have four laser disc players, so. You do. I, I need more TVs. Now. Well, I, I don't need more TVs. I don't mean that much. I have TVs. I have three TVs at work in case you need them. Yeah. All right. And, and we see our team monitors at work. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have like 40 monitors and TVs. Yep. Well, you, you're not going to run out anytime soon. No, no. The, uh, I hope the laser disc players still work. I mean, they work perfectly, but they haven't been used in 10, 12 oh, I'll, years. I'll get, them, get, I'll get them to work. I thought you would. Oh, by the way, thank you for this. You're welcome. This is a VFD. You can run little motors at different speeds for this. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, you can run. You can. Uh, you can use single phase power and run a three phase motor. Some of them can actually run off of a DC. You know that. I've heard of it, but I don't know too much about. it. I'm not an expert on all that. It doesn't say on the outside that it can, but uh, my friend at Arduino vs. Evil recently ran a really big one that output like 480, like six phases. I don't know what the phase is for 480, but. Um, he just ran off a bunch of love after batteries. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Except for he, he, he spent the money to buy new ones. Nice. Nice. Yeah, this is a lot of extra. By the way, mine, watch out. In here is a huge fucking spider. Okay. Bring the camera in. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's still down there. Well, over there. Oh, see him? Oh, he's right in the bag. So he's going to live here and repopulate here. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, Is he poisonous? I do not want to know. Should we kill it when it comes out or not kill it? Yeah, totally. Okay. So much better than pedaling. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you wonder why I don't want a car. Yeah, and how far do you go? I mean, as far hey. as you want, I imagine. Yeah. Kind of just build a bigger battery if you want to go more. See, see, that's why I'm turning to a mixty, so you can wow. step through it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Do you want one now? Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's gonna be getting a sidecar. Well, that's gonna be awesome. The yeah. sidecar is gonna have a wheelbarrow um, sh uh, shell thing for the actual holding all the stuff. Oh, nice. So it's just so a, sh so so just a wheelbarrow. And picking, you can just get what it just load it up. Yeah. We nice. call it dumpster diving. <laughs> dumpster diving. Yes. Is you're going to want some of this. And, oh. and I know that you'd never buy it yourself. And um, so there's a store up where I can get this stuff like super cheap. And I love it. Oh my God. Okay. You can take anything rusted and make it like new. So you got three and a half gallons. And I also brought you some um, different containers, like a gallon container, a quart mm -hmm. container. And it'll be awesome for you to soak like the little parts from the lathe and stuff in. Yeah. And make them look like brand new. Honestly, a lot of the parts are probably pretty fine. Like a little bit of a uh, wire brushing would be okay for these. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably save that for like gas tanks and stuff like that. That'd be perfect. Whatever you think. Yeah. Um, oh. I don't think it's going to rain tonight. So tell you what, how about we not, uh, since you guys are going to be continuing on your road trip. Yeah. How about you guys, we keep this stuff in here tonight. Okay. And then you guys can head on your way to your, and, and reach St. Louis without it being dark. Okay. And then tomorrow we can unload this stuff. Sounds all the heavy good. Stuff. You got it. Okay. 
Plus, I'll figure it out. Fine twister. Here we go. Plus, I um, I just don't feel like moving this much stuff quite yet. It's a uh, a lot for rushing it. Those it those laser disc pliers are pretty heavy. Having trouble there? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't notice it has a step. That's should be shorter, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, it's There's crazy. So, 20 30s uh, truck beds will be at this height. <laughs> yeah, they just keep getting bigger, don't they? Yeah, they it's absurd. Pretty soon, though, everyone's gonna be ri riding around those things that, that people drive around at quarries and mines, uh, strip mines. You know what I mean? When, those, I, when I first saw trucks like this, I thought they were ridiculous, and uh, but that's what they are now. Mm -hmm. You have any use for any old glass bottles? You never know. Ball jars? Do you want any? Yeah. I got some. You can take. Uh, you want to come take a look real quick? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Found them in a barn a couple years ago. A couple years back. By the way, thank you very much. Well, thanks for all the stuff, but You're especially welcome. that. That's cool. You know, I'll probably I'll probably cheat a little bit on the motorcycle restoration, the mm -hmm. old, the old 1960s Jalera. Yeah. And actually use some of that. Well, you're gonna want to. This is fantastic. And the nice thing is. Is you can take rust off of really delicate things. Yeah, especially like chrome, because if, if you try to brush chrome, it'll fuck it up. Yep, this will just take off the rust, nothing else. And it's totally non-toxic. Um, the only thing is, is to get the most use out of it. Don't let it get oily. Yeah. Whatever you put in it, have clean, you know, if that's to your I'm going to give myself some really nice degrees here anyway. Okay. Let's see. Anything, oh, yeah. anything you want. Take a pick, <laughs> and I'll tell you if you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, you are going to be leaving with tons of stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I need something cool that maybe has some significance to the local area. You know. Well, I don't know if I have so much of that. Yeah. Well, that's all right too. There isn't too much stuff from around here, but I mean, there's some older stuff down well, here. In, in a way, though, you found it here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now, I don't know which one I'm going to get hit when I touch, but that, that'll that be interesting. Mm -hmm. What's that? It is a select, select. bottle. Had it been like a Select Beverages Company? Drink Select Beverages. So I'm guessing it was a generic bottle. They just put any flavor soda in it? Yeah. It's probably cool. like flavored, you know. That's kind of cool. It is cool. Some of these my mom was wanting, but we haven't seen in years, so <laughs> she'll be okay to get rid of them. Okay, for your consideration, this box now. All right. Some bigger ones. You know, I might want to keep this one. Keep that one. I think I'm going to keep the bigger ones because okay. I'll, I'll put stuff in them. Nice. But uh, like, you can have that one if you want. Oh, nice. That one? Yeah. Okay. I don't mean, it's an older one, but I found yeah. that. Uh, that one was not from the barn. That was in the creek. Oh, I'll be darned. And uh, so that was in one of my videos for... Did you find it like using that uh, probe and all of that? No, or just, yeah. I, I never really found much luck with that. I always just... Yeah, I better take... I think I have room for one more. That looks like a good one. Oh, wait. We also have these, though, remember? Okay. Oh, wow. And you gotta look through those. These are ones from actual, like, uh, bottle hunts, so... Oh, yeah. Bush beer. Look at that. You know that? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's cool. Thank you. And what, uh, this one I think is from 1960s. No, it's after that. 1970s. I don't know. Oh, yeah. This one is a hexagonal oh, or wow. octagonal. Yeah. Is it like ketchup or something like that. Oh, I'll be darned. Heinz ketchup maybe from like is. the 50s yep. or something. <laughs> oh, I thought you said it, it read it on there. Um, this little blue bottle. It's kind of funky. I might be able to find a use for that though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's cool. I like the color. Is that one where you were talking about the glasses may have certain chemical constituent in it that change color with light? Uh, no, that'd be purple. Okay. And I can show you stuff tomorrow when you come back. Okay. Um, I wish I would have found the whole bottle to that. Because that, that would have been so cool. It's one of those big medicine bottles. Yeah. Those things are so neat. Oh, you want that? <laughs> it's pretty cute. <laughs> It's a little crack, but you make sure you wrap it in something when okay. you take it the 400 mile journey back home. Okay. Okay. Oh, Astoria. here, here. That's an example of the of the pink purple stuff. Oh, look at that! I can yeah. see it. Wow, and that allows you to, to really be pretty close to the. That's date. from 1895 to wow. 1920, if I understand right. Wow. 
this is top two. You know those old, um, before they had the plastic water fountain bottles? Yeah. The big ones, they had these. And it was, I actually have one of them. It's like the five gallon bottle. Oh, yes. It's yes, a five I gallon jug. Those. So this is the nozzle for I think the spout. So. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, we have some more. We have blue. I only want the broken ones, really. Well, I mean, I can, I'll take all of them <laughs> if I have to. <laughs> but you can have some of these ones too if you wish. Okay, all right. Whitehall. Oh my god, guys. This is so cool. A lot's been happening. I got the spur of the workshop cleaned up. Quite a bit, actually. And I pressure washed a lot of lumber. Been running the, the um, dehumidifier because I, I want to make sure this stays at a particularly low humidity in here because it's humid outside and this stuff needs to stay dry. Especially like all the laser discs, those are really cool. And the laser disc players, but I'm also trying to dry out this TV because I'm just having some weird issues. But I want to get that going. I just started filming and didn't quite have any plan. And I've realized I should stop filming for this video and I should only film unique, like, focused videos. So that's it for this video. And then tomorrow when his, when his wife and, and, her, and her friend are doing whatever in St. Louis, having fun, he'll come over and... Like, we'll go to the scrapyard, and that'll be its own video. We'll unload the lathe and assemble it, and that'll be its own video. We'll mess with the TV, that'll be its own video. We'll mess with the laser discs, that'll be its own video. There isn't much of a need for another overarching video for all of these, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, and also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him an Apple too. So, the one that I found at the, the electronics recycling day. And so he can have a video on his channel of playing around, around with the Apple II. I might even help him film a, a couple things. So go subscribe to his channel. It's the uh, Thermionic Man. I'll put a link in the description. I am just tired because I've just been cleaning up like crazy. I'm really kind of burnt out. We were going to make a, <coughs> a pair of stairs for the loft. But you know what, I've just been going full tilt for like weeks, months actually. And I just want a break. So he's going to come over and we're just going to have fun. We're not going to have to build anything. We'll assemble the lathe, get some parts from them, the scrap yard, clean them up, do some fun with them, mess with laser discs. It'll be fun. Ninety minutes before we got here, I decided, because I had this all cleaned up, I had it all cleaned up, I swear. I, I, I realized my little uh, plastic tarp shed <coughs> could use a bit of cleaning. And one thing led to another. And I ended up emptying out the entire tarp shed and totally cleaning up everything and moving this stuff in here and all that kind of stuff. And it helped clean up the yard a lot, though. I got a lot of stuff out of the yard because a lot of stuff was waiting to find a place to be indoors. And so now that stuff can be inside the tarp shed. So the yard's a lot more cleaned up. But there's a lot of junk in here. Oh well. Tomorrow, I think before he gets here, I might focus on cleaning up a bit. Because the, the workbench is all kind of messed up and whatnot. Today I spent about two hours putting up more nails and finding places to put everything. Because it's going to be a real, real issue pretty soon. I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy. It's really surprising the kind of friends that I've made on this channel. Because like, that was really nice of him to drive that stuff down here. One, to give me all this stuff. 
I paid him 20 bucks for the for the TV because because he he wanted to give it to me, and I was like, take 20 bucks for it. I I can't take all this stuff for free. Well, okay, I didn't take the lathe for free. The lathe um, cost 450 bucks on Craigslist. I already gave him the money so he can have him and his wife can have fun in St. Louis, at whatever hotel they're at or whatever. You know, having having money on trips a good thing. And um, yeah. 450 bucks for an old lathe is not a bad deal, especially one like that. Chicago has a really good deal on lathes. There's, I guess there's a lot of them up there. Down here, there really aren't any lathes, and so they're like 2,000 bucks. I'm going to go inside and go to bed. No. I'm going to go inside, edit this together really quick, upload it, and then go to bed. How about that? So you're probably going to be watching this pretty well, real time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya.